who's feeling the overwhelm between the schools, the, the plays, the drinks, the sports days, <laughs> work, um, holidays, camps. The overwhelm is, uh, is real right now. So it's not just, of course, about the physical overwhelm of having a desk super messy with stuff that we don't even know where to start, but it's also, you know, the mental um, overwhelm. And uh, both of them are very much linked. And I talk about that a lot when I talk about confidence, when I do work on, around confidence. And um, when I met Tanya, she's also a mom. We live quite locally uh, in NW8. When I met Tanya, I thought she would be a fantastic guest to have. She's named like me with a Y, uh, the best name in the world. So I see she's, uh, she's there. Let me invite her. Chatting about decluttering, decluttering, decluttering and confidence and how they both impact one another. Hello, Tanya. How are you? Hi, yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Very good. So I was, don't know if you heard my little intro about the, uh, the rushing and overwhelm of the moment, which I know you also are going through this as a, as a mother of the, you know, trying to organize everything plus your clients. And I, even this IG live almost got rescheduled for that particular <laughs> reason. So thanks so much for being here. And, you know, I'd love to hear about how you help your clients um, with your Marie Kondo method and uh, how that impacts their overall confidence. Yeah, sure. No, I very much relate. It does feel like it was just half term and the um, summer holidays are now already just around the corner. Can you hear me okay? Yes, there, there's a bit of a um, sound. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I'm... That might be better. Excellent. Yes, I can hear better. So, um, yeah, so what do I do? I go around to my client's home and I help them declutter, organize, simplify their homes. And through the process, it's very much identifying what brings them joy in their life, what do they want their life to look like, and arranging things accordingly. So, you know, on the surface, decluttering, organizing, they can be quite superficial things. They can just be making things look pretty. But the way that we usually do it is it's quite an intense process where we are literally going through everything in the home, uh, deciding whether to keep it or to let it go. And through this process, usually people find, I know I found it myself, is you do gain confidence because, you know, when you've made thousands of decisions about items in your home based on some vision of what you want your life to be, each step along the way, you're just strengthening what I call the decision-making muscle. Because um, I think confidence is very related to decision-making. And often there's a huge opportunity cost in not taking a decision about something that could just be, you know, drifting, you know, staying in a job you don't love or living some kind of life where you're like, mm, I'm not really satisfied. I'm not really happy. But you know what, I'll just kind of get on with it and not think about it. Um, I think it's so common, you know, modern life is super busy, cluttered, chaotic, not just with physical stuff or material stuff. But, you know, there's so much to watch, to read, to do. You know, we could be a thousand versions of ourselves. And that, that choice is some, sometimes overwhelming. So I think in the modern world, the art of making decisions confidently, it stands you in good stead in all aspects of life. And really, the Marie Kondo method, I always say, which is Marie Kondo's way of looking at tidying and decluttering which I can talk more about but her way of looking at it is very focused on making decisions based on what brings you joy and practicing practicing decisions in a sort of methodical way so that you deal with harder decisions after you get some confidence having tackled the easier decisions so it's very related to yeah. confidence thank you I love that I I see some familiar people who've joined Chelsea um, thanks so much for joining. Um, look, I have a desk right now, and that's that's um, to to do with decision making that you were just talking about. I have a desk right now, which is filled of admin and and stuff to do. And I usually, you know, say I'm going to dedicate at least two hours or an hour a week 
um, to look into the admin or the planning around what's on my desk. Um, and I've decided, and I've done something that's not very uh, coach-like of me, but I've done something which was I've, I've put everything inside, inside the drawers thinking, look, there are other priorities at the moment and decision-making is about, is about that, right? So saying yes to the things that you need to do that are priorities and, um, and then saying no to the things that even though you want to do them, they may be not a priority. But sometimes when life is so overwhelming, it's, it's very difficult to say, <laughs> to, to say no to certain things, uh, especially when it's related to school runs or, or, or events with your kids. You cannot say no to them. So then the pile gets, gets um, bigger and bigger. It's harder to want to spend time looking at this admin becomes overwhelming. And what I've realized is that it impacts then your overall confidence of doing even the simple things uh, such as maybe, you know, taking your kid to an activity. And there's, there's sometimes a bit of a feeling of, of resentment that might um, build up as a consequence of having that pile of, of physical pile of uh, paper that's there in your desk. And, and I just want to ask you, you know, what kind of advice do you have when this happens? You know, when this, you have this moment of overwhelm, you know, the, your drawers are full, you have to, you know, you're just paying the bills that are urgent because, you got, you know, you're going to get a reminder. <laughs> you know, they're, they're very organized in the, here in the UK. You get a reminder, you get, you, you get sent to court straight away <laughs> for it. But what's the advice? when you're so overwhelmed to just to just start and and because you can't be Marie Kondo and just have it done you know that way because we we're not trained like that but if we can't you know ha have you over at that moment what do you what what's your advice yeah so first of all I think you know number one advice which I'm guessing you probably speak to clients about this as well is be very kind to yourself because you know if you haven't been able to do paperwork because you're busy with the kids stuff you know that is a part of life the fact that that's piled up isn't sort of a failure but when you notice it starting to weigh on you and distract you from the rest of your life that sort of feeling of dread I think it's noticing the tipping point so I always say like once you've done a huge declutter of your home there is always maintenance and if let's say paperwork is building up there'll usually be a point at which in your mind you're like oh it will take me 20 minutes to do that that's not that overwhelming right it's just when does it tip where it's got to such a big unwieldy pile that's got so intense that you've left for so many months, then it suddenly becomes this overwhelming job because it's suddenly like, okay, maybe that's going to take two hours, but I just can't ever find two hours in my life. So I think it's just noticing where that tipping point is. And if you already have got to that tipping point where you think, oh, it's this big job now that I'm dreading. Just break it down into um, chunks. One tip that I use in all different types of tidying when it comes to like, like you say, dealing with this pile, like an urgent thing that now has got to an urgent point is set a half an hour timer on your phone. Just start the process, you know, like get it all out, make sure all the, you know, the extra stuff, like any leaflets or envelopes that have gone on there, all of that goes into recycling straight away. Get it down to the key things and, you know, categorize it into like, let's say bills, school stuff something that you can do relatively simply you're not really making a huge decision you're just prepping yourself to then be able to do the decisions that's step one so maybe after half an hour you've got it into a smaller pile of papers you've managed to discard a few straight away that are completely irrelevant you've got it into action points and then you've got you know this I need to deal with this I need to deal with and then those can add, be added to like a weekly to-do list depending on their urgency but you know it's just breaking it down because usually with all of these things they are overwhelming but then when you actually start if you just spend that first 30 minutes on it you usually find it's a lot less overwhelming than you originally anticipated. I love that I love this idea that you won't be able to to do it all at once and and it's about, okay, breaking it down and uh, dedicating time to slowly do it. I, I would say that I find that, for instance, usually I would do once a week of, uh, of looking into that pile of paper. But if, when it gets to that level of overwhelm, then I'll increase that to maybe every, to do it daily, but less amount of time so that I see a bigger progress. Because otherwise, the overwhelm remains for the whole week. And, and then it accumulates, you're accumulating things rather than reducing it. So 
I, I love what you're saying in the in the categorization and and just starting, just starting every day, but not not leaving it to once a week, but trying to do it a little bit every day. Yeah, a little bit when you can. And I think it, everyone works out, like, you know, I say this about anything really, like you can do it with laundry. Some people prefer the little and often approach and some people prefer let it build up like a game of Tetris, you know, let, let it build up to a certain point and then actually it's more satisfying to do a bigger chunk. I personally find that with some chores, like even with laundry and stuff, I actually prefer to be like, I'll just do it all once a week as opposed to like, let it eat up a little bit of each of my day. But it's different for everybody. I know loads of people who are like, oh my gosh, I wouldn't be able to do that. It would stress me out. I like to do a little bit every day. So, you know, everyone has their own approach. And I think exactly the same is with paperwork. Treat it as an experiment, find out the approach that works. But once you've found the approach that works for you, you know, that's where you really try and stick with it. And I think with just taking your paperwork example, when I help people, you know, we get their home to from, you know, from a more cluttered place to a less cluttered place but you know it's obviously about systems and when I say systems it's always just simple sets of procedures that will keep you on top of things and in the case of paperwork what are you doing so as it immediately comes in are you chucking rubbish straight into the recycling and only dealing with the stuff and then you know rather than put it in the drawer why not stick a post-it or write something on the paper if you're able to write on the paper like highlight has to be done by this day and put it in a upright pending box. Some people use a drawer flat, but I'm always wary of putting things lots on top of each other because that's when you feel like the stuff at the bottom gets lost. So Marie Kondo, when she talks about storage, where possible, she suggests store things vertically. Because when we store, at least when I work with my clients, and we've, we've decluttered, the next step is storage. And the more you can store vertically and accessibly, whether it be clothes, whether it be papers, the less, difficult it is to sort of get what's at the bottom because everything's equally accessible so the same goes with paperwork so I usually suggest people have like one of those magazine sort of inbox files that's vertical so all your pending papers are vertical somewhere either in your desk or even inside a cupboard but the fact is you can reach in and like literally see what the things you have to do are rather than having to sort of go in and reach into the bottom of the pile and something so simple like that just makes that little obstacle um, reduced, you know, so. This is so good. So good, Tanya. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going <laughs> to buy, I'm going to buy that vertical drawer. Look, Chelsea's also saying genius. Um, I'm going to buy that vertical drawer. I really love that. And uh, I'll make sure that, um, you know, um, I, I guess my husband who has that pile who's three times my my size will also get that but that's that's fantastic giving actually the same it you give the same importance for for a little while but i'm sure i'm sure that you could also categorize them in in term of you know how quickly if it's bills they, i'm sure they should they should be in a separate box but mm -hmm. if it's other things that are maybe less urgent you put them in another box yeah so, so yeah, well, I think, again, it depends on how much paper is coming into your life. Like often when I'm working with clients, we really talk about what paper is essential in life. What can you go to digital? Because our digital lives are so busy anyway. Do we really need the busyness of paperwork? So, you know, there's also a big job of unsubscribing, changing bank statements to paperless, so on, which bills can be paperless. Then, you know, if you're with a smaller amount of paper, it's usually, you know, you can categorize it to some extent. But I usually like to keep a pending box, not so difficult that it's got loads of categories. In fact, in my pending box, the only category I have is I have an envelope for receipts that I might keep for a month and then I'll just chuck them away afterwards. Um, but then you'll have a filing system for permanent papers you need to keep. So, you know, maybe important utility bills, you like to keep a 12 month record. That's when you have, you differentiate between permanent storage and the pending box. Most of what goes in your pending box can usually be a job that's done and then you can chuck it away or it's something that you have to put in your filing box of, you know, permanent papers. But again, this all goes back to systems. And the minute you start like thinking about these systems and like being intentional about them, the easier everything becomes. So it's as simple as you have a utility bill. OK, it's in your pending box. You've paid it, but you still want to keep it for record. Right. You have a file. You put it in the file with your other bills. You take out the, you know, if you're keeping 12 months of records, if, you, if that's what you've personally decided, you at that very moment just take out the oldest one and chuck it away. So 
this is where the overwhelm doesn't happen because you have this set of little procedures, like these little micro actions that just mean that you don't have this job one day where you've got a file of eight years worth of utility bills that then you have to, you know, go through. It's that that job doesn't exist because every time you file away one, you chuck away one. I love that. I wanted to actually ask you about um, about something specific around when we come back from holidays because as as you know, the holidays approaching and sometimes you know there's this overwhelm of actually even though a holiday is a, is a happy time we're very lucky and blessed that we can have the choice of going on a holiday we know that we it's not about that it's more like this change transition of you know cutting from a routine and then one of the things that we dread the most when we come back from holiday obviously is all the organization around schools but also the paperwork that we receive uh, and I, I know I'm focusing a lot on paperwork, but um, I do I do feel that you know when when I talk to my clients that it's it's a big part of their lack of confidence is is being on top of their to dos, being on top of the things that that uh, is overwhelming them physically, right? So that's that's why I thought you know I would center it around that. But um, do you what do you what do you tell your clients when you know they come back from a long break and how, how do you find them uh, also you know how, how they're feeling usually and how do you help them yeah so I'd say that if you're coming back from a long break and it feels like stuff has just built up like one thing I'd suggest is trying to write down everything that's weighing on your mind on a piece of paper and then um, an idea actually that i come to in the last couple of years is when you're often you know people have like a family to-do list and a work to-do list yes you can have that once you've written down everything on a piece of paper but the uh, another really useful tip i found is breaking down that huge unmanageable to-do list into sort of context so what items have to be done at home so i don't know laundry related stuff decluttering the kids drawers you know, for the old size of clothes. This is stuff you can only do when you're in the house, right? Then, so you might have a home context list. Then you might have like a phone call context list, which are the calls you need to make, book an appointment, do this, do that. You can do those when you're on the move, driving in the car, like having a nice walk in the park with, with, your, with your headphones on. Um, then, you know, like what can you do on email that you're happy to do from your phone, you know? What do you need to do at your laptop? So sometimes, picturing where you have to be when you do the task makes it a little bit less overwhelming because then you can actually be like each day there's a week each day I'm going to do like a home task and then I'm going to like when I'm walking to pick up the kid on on, on the school run I'm going to make a couple of the phone calls and book the appointments or you know the errands that I need to do when I'm out I can just arrange my tasks in a more enjoyable way rather than being like ah I have like 80 things to do and I'm just going to try and plow through them and tick 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 yeah, yeah. I, I, whilst I was listening to you, I was thinking a lot about the, the creation of, of habits um, and creating healthy habits around, you know, your, your to-do list as well. So, for instance, if, let's say, one of the habits that you have may be um, wanting to connect with your family or friends and, and chatting to them on a weekly basis, that not, that's something that also might be missing in your life because you're dedicating so much time uh, for your immediate family, but you might also miss it, be missing your, your family living abroad and you want to speak with them, etc. It's creating, it's creating a routine around that and saying, okay, when I pick up my kids and it's, you know, very much this, this BJ Fogg, this author of Tiny Habits, you know, like um, creating that habit that you say, okay, when I do this, then I will do that. So it reminded me a lot yeah. of, of what you were saying here. So when you've got those lists, you, you kind of categorize them. But I'm thinking, though, that I would not look, I, I'm quite organized, but I'm not very organized. And I think I would benefit a lot from the expertise of somebody like you to kind of help me get those system in place. And then, you know, it'd be easier to create those, those habits. So let's say if my priority is during this cycle of life for my daughter you know to do certain things um, to learn how to for instance it was to learn how to cycle was one priority for for the last term you know the assessment was a priority for before so then you know like when i do let's say i pick up my daughter from school then i will you know talk to her about certain things 
that will help her for the assessment, let's say, or uh, then I will take her to the park um, and we will learn how to cycle. So you attach a habit to to the time that you have your, your, your day to day, right? So that's, uh, that's very, I don't, I don't know what you think of that. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely love it. I've also read um, Atomic Habits by James Clear, which is talks about a lot of similar things. But yeah, 100%, I think the more you can make a routine, the less it's going to be like this jumbled overwhelm in life. So like, let's say it's, and this I'm saying this is this is all stuff I'm saying is like the ideal. I don't always do all of this myself. Sometimes I do. Sometimes, you know, yeah. life gets in the way and I, everything I'm saying, it's not that I'm doing this 100% all of the time. But, um, you know, with things like maintenance of, you know, the kids clothes, the things that just kind of have to happen in the background, you know, two years pass and th this is all outgrown. It's one of the things I find the hardest personally. Um, if you have it in your calendar that, you know, every three months or whatever it is for you, you have it, you, you like put it in your calendar and you kind of in your mind, you have a routine or you link it to like at the end of every term, I'll spend, you know, an hour either with my kids if they're old enough or, you know, I'll do it myself. How, however it works, you know, just trying to think about where could these fit in in a routine? Because there's some stuff which I say are big projects in life, right? Projects are like maybe a task that can be accomplished like learning to learning to ride a bike once you've done it at least you've learned it and then you can carry on doing it but they're projects with like a finite end date and like projects are usually things that will feel like a big achievement in life you know we do, we've chosen to do them and once we accomplish them we'll feel great that we have a, we've, you know we set we did what we set out to do but it, also in life there's just recurring stuff and I think particularly as busy working parents and I think dads feel this just as much as mums it's a blur because we've got the big projects yet we've got the recurring stuff but it all piles on the to-do list together so when they are recurring things if you can sort of streamline them automate them to any extent so you know a yeah. simple example is instead of the grocery shop just have the you know the online order come at the same time every single week and know that the day before or two days before you have to sort of vaguely kind of menu plan you know those little things if it's the same time every week it's easier to maintain the habit and that gives you more time to focus on the projects or the things that you really care about rather than the constant mundane stuff of life which we all have yeah no no that's that's so true uh, <laughs> I, I was i was um, earlier just before our ig live i had to run actually to get my child's costume for his play it's not a fancy costume it's uh, just a brown top he's a villager brown top and a, a brown legging and I had to run it was a little quarter to one so like 15 minutes because he had to do a rehearsal today and I was I was uh, laughing myself because actually you know whilst I was organizing I had gotten his his costume it's just that I was missing the most important which was okay I had to bring that a week ago right but at the end, at the end, you know, I, I realized, and just to give you that example, but I realized also that there were other things for my daughter's school that we had to organize the t-shirt and for my son's sports day, etc. And I, I, I realized that with my daughter's school, I had to say no to certain things. I, I did go to the um, to the sports day for her, but you know, one t-shirt with the name and the photo, etc., was meant to be organized, and I just said. I, I can't I can't have this done and um and you know I was feeling guilty that you know she wouldn't get that particular t-shirt etc but what I, what I want to say here is you you have to be like you said not to be too um to shame yourself so much when you can't do certain things um try to be as organized as possible and also say making choices and saying no to certain things that you know they're not so much of a priority like having a t-shirt for a four-year-old that has the the picture of the class and the name etc it's not the end of the world you know if she doesn't get it on time she might get it a few days later and 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 sometimes we create so so many of those invisible tasks as working mothers right and and i think this this decluttering really helps understanding that that you know like you're more organized and but this like you said certain choices that you have to make so yeah. I, I'd love to hear about how you, when you enter the home, maybe you can give an example of a busy um, parent, working mom, and, you know, how you've helped her um, yeah. and regaining confidence. 
Yeah, got it. So the thing I'd like to say, first of all, is, you know, you can talk about like little bits, you know, that you're trying to organize. And I think there's a lot about organization and decluttering now in the media. So it's like this other pressure on people to be, have a nice home and have a Pinterest worthy home and inst Instagrammable like pantry and stuff. There's all this like ridiculous pressure. But I think that a lot of people are getting into this horrible cycle of like buying stuff to look like to help organize and then try and do these little mini bits of organization but they're just sort of like constantly feeling like they're doing it you know I don't know if anyone else feels like this but you know just always decluttering always organizing but not really feeling like that big impact um and that's where I really like the Marie Kondo method so like I'll have gone in and often I when I help a client I do do single one-off session, but often I'll be doing a 30 hour or a 50 hour package with some, someone. And the idea is we're going through their entire home in a super methodical way. And the reason I say methodical is I think that, you know, when you have a spare hour and you're like, oh, I'll just do this little task and I'll just do that little task. That's great for maintenance. But if you're really coming from a home that you feel you've just sort of lost a little bit of control over and, you know, you're not really sure what you're doing, it's really good to start from the start point and sort of tick off things and really complete them and that's where I think I help because I'm with someone and I can you know guide them through that process so the Marie Kondo method she famously talks about what sparks joy um, and we go through different categories um, and that's where the method comes in so st you start by decluttering your clothes just your clothes not your family's clothes um, then you do your books then your paperwork then you start tackling like everything else like kitchen stuff bathroom stuff hobby equipment, art supplies. And then very, very finally, you tackle your sentimental items. And they're left till the end because the idea is throughout these hundreds and thousands of decisions, you will have honed your own sensitivity to your own joy. And I call it strengthening your own ability to you know, make decisions, your decision-making muscle. So when you're dealing with the really tough stuff, the often, I, th I talk to clients who have tried to declutter themselves, they, they might open up a drawer or a cupboard or, you know, whatever it is, and they're getting stuff out and suddenly some stuff will totally distract them, tip them down memory lane. You know, in the paperwork example, then you start looking at like old artwork or greeting cards. When I do it with people, if we're opening that drawer, when we come across the greeting cards that could be sentimental, we put them in a big box and that's sentimental to deal with at the very end of what I call the tidying festival. So therefore it is more systematic and you don't feel like you're running around in circles. Um, and the other thing is that you you tend to bring everything together. So taking clothes, number one, I'll do this in the first session with clients, we'll empty things from their wardrobe, but also I'll say, okay, do you have any clothes in the attic? Do you have anything in the spare room? What about coats in the hallway? We look at it all together. And very, sometimes we just need to see everything together. When I did this myself in my own home, I was working full time in investment banking. I didn't yet have kids, I was married, but I got all my clothes out from everywhere and I was shocked at how much I owned. And I think most people, you just need to see that to suddenly realize, okay, I see why my wardrobe is a bit complicated and can be a bit overwhelming because look at how much I own and maybe 80% of it I rarely wear. Um, and I think sometimes that shock factor is super overwhelming to do yourself. But when you're with someone who's doing that every day with people and giving you the confidence, confidence also comes, is contagious, right? So if a client is lacking real confidence doing that task, which they often are, you know, they've spoken to me, they're like, oh, I've tried to do some decluttering myself. You know, I think I need some support. Me doing this, I'm actually in clients' houses on average four days a week during term time. The fact I do it every day and I've seen that pile on the bed of the clothes, you know, 40 times or something, you know, it, it just relieves their stress because I'm like, yeah, it's a lot, but we'll get through it. Do you, get, do you keep the energy for your own stuff then after seeing 40 piles of clothes? <laughs> yeah, so that's a really good... So, so the other thing I'd say is that once you've done this intense reset, what I like to do is I like to help people with the intense reset. And I think then it's just teaching people like tricks and tips on maintaining, having yes. systems in place, getting the regularity. But that is a much less overwhelming task if you've done the big job. And I think that sometimes we confuse daily tidying. I talk about this a lot when um, I also sometimes help people tidy with their children or their teenagers. I actually do sessions with them. But 
when we tell a child to tidy their room, what do we mean? Often we just sort of mean put your toys back or your books back or take stuff from the lounge back to your room. It's all a bit blurred, but really there's different aspects of tidying and these are all different skills to learn. Children can be taught them, adults can be taught them. There is decluttering, which means choosing what you wanna keep and choosing what to discard. And this is usually the bit that we're not taught at school in tidy up time. We're taught where to put things back, but we're not taught in the first place, what are we keeping in life and what are we choosing to let go of and let go of with gratitude. Um, so that's decluttering number one. Se second is organizing. That's a different skill set. It's an amazing thing that our brains manage to do as humans. We manage to categorize, you know, the long socks, the short socks, you know, what's a, what's a book, what's a magazine. That's something we're doing all the time, but that's actually a different skill. So there's, and the thing about organizing when in the context of tidying a room is, deciding where a certain type of thing lives. So where are the, these exercise books going to live in the room? Like allocating things a home based on what they are, that's gonna make life simpler when everything has somewhere to live. Um, and then the third thing is really daily tidying, which just means resetting, putting things back in the home that you've allocated them. So once everything has a clear home, it's actually not very difficult. Usually you walk into a messy room, if you've got that structure in place, you have decluttered and you have organized. You usually know even if it's crazy messy, it's only going to take 10 minutes to kind of put things back in the place it belongs. But once we've got to a stage where we haven't decluttered, there's no organizational system, it's really hard to do a daily tidy. So then we're confusing it. We're kind of trying to do a bit of daily tidying and a bit of decluttering and a bit of organization all in little piecemeal bits and we're not really getting anywhere and we feel we're doing so much but not getting the results and that's where I like just like to come in and be like just don't worry about it let's just do it step by step and just follow up you know I'll just guide you through it I love this I am totally sold on on everything that you just said and and I I kept thinking about you know having to teach my children how to be organized but also understanding what they want to keep and what they want to give away um, and I, I, I realize that, you know, when, when they're four years old, maybe they're a bit young to understand that. Uh, but you can tell already with my eldest one, six years old, that, you know, he will, when, when it, the time is right, he will tell me, okay, this I'm okay to give away, uh, to give to charity. We're not using that. This I can keep. Um, but it does require a, a, real, a real effort uh, getting there. But I have a question for you. You, you were talking about skills, and I'm aware of time, so that'd be, that'd be kind of our, our, last, our last question. Um, you're talking about different skills, and I'm all, I'm all about, you know, redefining motherhood, understanding our skills, what we're good at, trying to match them with our children's, you know, preferences, creating, like, quality time that is good for both of us, etc. Cetera, et cetera. In terms of skills, do you, do you believe that, you know, you had this this kind of sensitivity towards that what you're doing today in terms of you know organizing etc when we when were you first aware of of this was it when you found out discovered Marie Kondo was it even before before that so I think I always had a tendency towards aesthetically pleasing and sort of organized spaces but sometimes in life and I think this is where the outer can reflect the inner. Like when I was at university, everything was a complete chaos and that just reflected where I was mentally, I think. And however, I think when I read Marie Kondo in, it was about seven years ago, I read her books before she had her Netflix show and everything, but I was drawn to her book. What stood out to me was the focus on prioritizing your own joy. And that's what I didn't think I had in life. So there's a difference between making things look tidy, um, you know, straightening things up, decluttering not having too much but if you're not doing it from a place of joy if you're doing it from a place of just you know constant oh, I need to do this I need to do that you're not what are you actually getting and I personally in my home I'm not even that much of a minimalist I've got quite a maximalist um, interior decor but it's so intentional now because it's really focused on things I love um, and bring me joy and I think um, you know we talk about prioritizing joy it can sound very selfish and self-indulgent but I just think that this is a tool Marie Kondo method of tidying is not a goal in itself to have a lovely home you know look beautiful or anything like that it is a tool to help you 
um, you know, live a life that's more joyful. And there are many tools which can help you do this. It's just a very practical tool um, that gets you there because in the method you focus on visualizing your ideal lifestyle and then you go through this methodical process of decluttering and thousands of times you ask yourself, does this bring me joy? And that's the powerful part. Um, it's making decisions, strengthening that decision making muscle, but also that freedom of giving yourself permission to be like, you know what, I, I can declutter that because it doesn't bring me joy. It's not that I have an obligation to keep it or, or whatever. And that really just spreads across into all life. You know, for me, I think asking myself that question thousands of times probably was one step along the way for me to finally leave a career that I'd been in for 12 years ultimately um, in the city and wasn't really that satisfied by. So it can, that's why um, the, one of her first book is called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up because I think it has different impacts for different people. Yes, absolutely. And uh, to anyone who joined, thanks for joining. You'll be able to watch the replay. We talked a lot about paperwork <laughs> during this, this part of the year where we have to juggle with so many things as, as mothers. So we talked about, you know, how to organize vertically and you've given us some great tips around that. We talked about, you know, confidence and how you, how you help your clients around that as well. So please watch the replay. Um, I want to just, just to finish off, could you, could you let us know how to best work with you? Um, of course, connect with you on Instagram, but if there's anything in particular you're, you're working on at the moment and um, please share with the with the audience yeah so probably um you know the instagram that you'll see here is where i share a bunch of you know tips tricks tidying inspiration knowledge about like the marie kondo method um and then from there you can link to my website the link in my bio which has a contact form if you want to get in touch with me um or you can always dm me i am pretty much fully booked i think i only have one day available now until the summer holidays where i'm going to be off for quite a while but i'll be taking sort of consultation calls to start setting up my bookings from september onwards so if you do want to work with me get in touch let's have the call now and you know get that initial chat going maybe i can just give you some help and advice and tips on the call itself that can inspire you to get started yourself um and i also have a bunch of blogs and resources information about the Marie Kondo method on my website which might also be helpful and motivating yes I, I i would recommend following you for your reels you give some quick actionable tips straight away um so definitely watch uh, watch those reels you're very good at it thank you so much for being so part of it. Uh, thanks chelsea for for your comments and everyone that joined uh, and we'll definitely be in touch and uh, please ask your questions to tanya send her a dm get it in touch with her Thanks so, so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Great week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.